in these situations, you know, one of the things that I was talking to a couple of the guys today about was, you know, the, the, the best problem solvers are the best entrepreneurs. The people that can solve the biggest problems generally make the most money, right? And so you, your ability to solve problems, that could be your current problems, that could be other people's problems, that could be huge companies' problems, right? Those abilities are a direct, direct reflection direct reflection of the income that you you bring in so let's what's an example um I'm trying to think of something that's let's just say someone that is like a janitor okay gotta have them problem they're solving though a lot of people can solve that problem right a lot of people can clean um and that's no disrespect to the people that do it i'm just saying like it's a problem that is being able to be solved a uh, taxi driver it would be another good example it's, you know, as long as you have a driver's license and you don't, you know, do stupid stuff, a lot of people can get behind a wheel once they're 16 years of age and drive people around, right? So certain skill sets and certain abilities pay better than others because of the problems of the people you're, you're able to solve the problem for, right? And so in the situation of my brother's company, uh, my brother Mike called me last night. And he's like, hey, yo, he goes, dude, crazy story for you. I'd like you to share it with your group because I think it's really good for them to hear. He said, you know, we, we hire um, some of the best educators in the world to come work for our company, um, kind of like Nike, right? So Nike would go out and they'd, they'd sign Michael Jordan, Bo Jackson, Andre Agassi. These are the early days, right? Some of you guys might know who those people are. And you're younger than me, apparently. Um, but we went out and they found the best because we wanted the best to represent our brand. And then, also, and then obviously, then the people that look up to those athletes, you know, they want to be part of that brand. So same idea with how they went out and like kind of sourced the best educators in the industry. And with those best educators that they sourced, they would, they put on, I think they put on right around 200 classes per month all over the, all over the country. Okay. So they fly educators in, like they're flying them all the time, all over. So as you can imagine, as flights start slowing down and salons start, you know, you know, we're holding, holding back from going to work and all that stuff. You know, their educators are like, well, we can't really go anywhere. And the salespeople are like, well, we can't really go anywhere either. And so this is cool because in three days, this is, this is what being an entrepreneur, this is what being a problem solver on a large scale um, is what the value is. You know, that part of their business of going in and educating salons and then having that, a backside of being able to offer their products and services, you know, when the, the class is over is, 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 a, is a chunk of change. It's, it's about a uh, it's a, it's a seven figure plus part of their business. Okay. So as you can imagine, when that comes to a screeching halt, especially when you had all these classes all lined up, you got to kind of improvise. Right. And so what do they do? They go and get a, um, a enterprise, uh, zoom account. Um, zoom is what we're filming this on as well. Right. So you guys know what zoom is, uh, just an online virtual kind of being able to have, have this, these kind of kind of conversations. And I've been on zooms like all day long. So, so awesome. By the way, I've been able to connect with a lot of you guys, a lot of champagne room people have been able to, to get together, but nevertheless, get a, get a zoom account. They get up, they set it up. So they have literally like 60 different rooms of education rooms in virtual, right? Virtual rooms. And then they get the salespeople trained up of how to help run it, how to be able to, you know, answer questions virtually, how to be able to, you know, do what they normally do in, in person. But of course we're standing behind computers, right? We're standing behind a video camera. Um, but, but really not, 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 not too different than what we do with you guys every week. Right. Uh, so nevertheless, in three days, three days. Okay. They've taken their entire company and they shifted the entire thing. They went to virtual, virtual training classes across the entire country with all the best educators in the world of their, of uh, and their brand ambassadors and their salespeople. And they got everyone working from home. They got, you know, or, or, the, or wherever they work. I mean, some of them have their own salons, just no one's in them and they, they're filming in there. But the bottom line is that quickly a company of that size with that many employees, instead of getting down on like all the, the things that, you know, they wish it would be, it's the, it's the hand they're dealt right this moment. And I think it's important for you guys to hear stories like that because um, it's so easy to, to fall down, to go down the rabbit hole of poor me, right? Poor them, man. Millions of dollars lost, you know, uh, all their employees, you know, whatever. We can all have that conversation about our current situation. But the bottom line is there's going to be the, the, the folks that decide to pivot and, and solve problems, right? And then there's going to be the folks that want to 
run from the problems. I talked about it on Monday night, but I don't want to go so deep into that necessarily today. But I, I wanted to bring that story up because I thought it was so cool. The fact that they're literally going to be running um, four times 60. It's like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of virtual classes. And in all, it, it could absolutely revolu revolutionize their business too. It, you know, at, sometimes we look at some of these situations that happen and, and what, what we need to be looking at is like, what was the good that came from it? You know, where, where did, where was the silver lining? There's always a silver lining, even in things like the worst situations that you could probably have ever went through. I know people that have had relationships that go sour. There's a, sometimes a silver lining that whether that's growth in yourself, whether it's toxic relationship, whatever in business, it could be this situation. It could be for them. It could be, well, wow. We just discovered that our effectiveness is just as effective over a virtual class. People don't have to drive. People don't have to do this. People can tune in from all these different places. And yet we still have the same effectiveness. And yet we don't have to fly people all over the country, have, you know, hotel rooms and taxis and Ubers and plane tickets and uh, per diem meals and stuff like that. So that expense potentially, I don't know. They don't know. It's just, just kind of getting rolling today, but that could potentially be a major silver lining in their business. But yet right now it might not seem like that because, you know, it's not what we understand. It's not what we know as the norm. And so I would just challenge you guys. If you guys could, I, I, I gave this challenge to someone else that wrote me today. And I said to her, I said, look, we don't know the, 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 the length of time. We don't know that you're, you're, you know, she had a, a, a little small e-com business. I was like, we don't know if your e-com business is going to be back up to the same amount of money it was making, you know, a couple weeks back, but that's out of your control. What is in your control is what you do with your time. Now, what is in your control is the new ideas that your really, really smart brain can come up with. 